As I said earlier, we will discuss in more details about the most important broker properties that you may need to consider in most real life scenarios. We will talk here about a configuration level property that is communication timeout property. This property defines the time in seconds that the broker will wait for a response from a network connection between two databases in the configuration before giving up. If no response is received within this period, the broker will consider the database unavailable. The default value of this property is 180 seconds, which is equivalent to 3 minutes. In case you have poor network connection in terms of reliability or latency, you may consider increasing the value of this property. A value of zero indicates that a network communication should never be timed out. Practically, you should never set this property to zero. This is a database property. Remember, we said we have three scopes or levels, configuration, database, and instance level. Also, this property falls under broker specific category because it affects how the broker will respond if a rack database instance becomes unavailable. Apply instance timeout is applicable only in a standby database. It controls how long the apply process should wait if it loses contact to its connected instance. Its default value is zero, which tells the apply process to fail over immediately. If you have unstable or busy network bandwidth, you would better increase the value of this property to about 20 seconds. Those are database level properties, and they are of database parameter category, which means those properties actually modify some database parameters. As far as the broker is enabled, those parameters should always be changed only by DGMGRL utility. Do not use the alter system command to modify them. The slide is showing a list of broker properties and their corresponding database parameters. In this table, you see the sum of the broker properties that modify the log archive destination attributes. For example, if you want to set the Redo transport service to use synchronous method, when shipping the Redolog files to the standby database Aura DBS2. In this case, in the DGMGRL command prompt, you would issue the command edit database Aura DB underscore S2 set property log XPT mode equal to sync. This command actually will change the attribute of the log archive destination parameter. In this slide, I'm going to explain the difference between changing the Redo transport method using the SQL plus and the DGMGRL command line. I will also discuss about what will happen in the background when you issue the command in the DGMGRL command line. In our example, we assume that we have a primary database and a standby database named Aura DB underscore S2. As you know, in this case, you set one of the log archive destination parameters in the primary database to make it connect to the standby database. In our example, we assume that we used log archive destination 2 and that it is configured to use a synchronous redo transport method. If our data guard configuration is to be managed by SQL plus, in order to change the redo transport method to synchronous method, you would connect to the primary database and issue the command alter system statement to set the sync attribute as shown in the slide. But if you are using the broker, you just invoke the DGMGRL utility and connect to any databases in your data guard configuration. You can connect to any database, not necessarily the primary database. Then you need to change the property log XPT mode of the standby database. 
For that, you issue the command edit database or IDB underscore S2 set property log XPT mode equal to sync. When you do that, the broker in the background will communicate with the primary database and modify the log archive destination to over there to apply the required changes. If you monitor the alert log file of the primary database, you will observe the alter system statement run by the broker. So, although you modify the property of the standby database, the change is actually applied on the primary database. As you can see, it all happens in the background. You just issue the command and the broker will take care of the rest. As I mentioned earlier, under SQL syntax properties category, we actually have only one property, that is apply a parallel. This property controls whether redo apply should use multiple processes to apply redo data to the physical standby database. The table shown to you in this slide and the table shown in this slide they are a list of broker properties that are used to control a logical standby database configuration. You will learn in a separate lecture how those properties can be used to modify the way a logical standby database operates. At this stage, you need to be aware that if you try to change any of those properties in a physical standby database, the DGMGRL will return an error to you. However, if you try to change them in a primary database, it will go fine. This is because a primary database could be converted into a logical standby database as a result of switch over. And if this happens, those properties will take effect. This table lists the instance level broker properties. These properties are considered as instance level because they are the only properties that can be different among the rack database instances in a broker configuration. You change a state of a member in a data guard configuration when you want to do one of the following. Start or stop redo transport services in the primary database, or when you want to start or stop redo apply services in a standby database or all the standby databases. You will need to do that in many occasions when you manage your data guard environment in real life. That's why it's a good idea to keep those properties in your mind. When you issue the command edit database or a DB set state equal transport off, you actually shut down the redo transport to all standby databases because that was the state of the primary database. If you want to stop shipping the redo files to a specific standby database, then you set a standby database level property, that is log shipping. Therefore, you would issue the command edit database aura db underscore s2 set log shipping equal to off. When you change the state of a standby database, you control the apply service. You can start it or stop it. If you remember to do that in SQL Plus, we have to issue the statement alter database recover managed standby database cancel in case of a physical standby database. And in case of a logical standby database, you issue the statement alter database stop logical standby apply. Compare this to using the broker to stop the standby services. You just set the state of the database regardless of the standby database type, and that's it. The broker will execute the right statement in the background to perform the required task. We talked a lot about how the broker could make your life easier when it comes to managing a data guard configuration. You might be now thinking, how can I configure it? The slide is showing the procedure you should follow to configure the broker in a data guard configuration. One, you create the necessary directories where you're gonna save the broker configuration files. Two, you set the broker configuration par file parameters. Three, you set up the static listener entries in all databases. Four, you clear the log archive destination two parameter. 
5. Start the broker processes in all databases. 6. Start the DGMGRL and connect to the primary database. 7. Create the base configuration files. 8. Add the standby database to the broker configuration. 9. Set the database properties. And finally, enable the configuration. Although it looks like a, a long procedure, but actually it's straightforward. We will discuss each of these steps in the incoming slides. You start by creating the directories where the broker configuration files will be located. They can be in a file system or an ASM disk group. After that, you set the values of the parameters DG Broker Config File 1 and DG Broker Config File 2. The broker needs to connect to an ideal database instance using a remote SysDBA connection. To make this possible for the broker, you must add a specially named static listener entry in the listener.ora file in each database. This static entry has to be made up of the format, the database unique name appended by the string dgmgrl, followed by the domain of the database. The example in the slide demonstrates a static listener entry for a database named oradb. As you can see, the value of the global DB name is oradb underscore dgmgrl dot domain. After setting up the configuration files and the listener.ora file, you're good to go ahead and enable the broker processes. To do that, set the parameter dg broker start to true in each database. Setting this parameter to true will kick off the broker processes in the database and setting it to false will shut down the broker processes. You should create the base configuration in the configuration files. This can be done by simply connecting to the primary database in the DGMGRL and run the statement as shown in the slide. Create configuration or ADB as primary database is or ADB, connect identifier is or ADB. After starting up the broker processes, you add all the standby databases to the broker configuration. You use the broker command add database to do that. The slide demonstrates an example. Add database or ADB underscore S2 as connect identifier is oradb underscore is2. oradb underscore is2 that comes after the add database is the unique name of the standby database that you want to add to your configuration. oradb is2 that comes after the connect identifier keyword is the connect descriptor that you define in the tns names .ora file, which points to the standby database. We are ready now to enable the broker configuration. It is advised though to use the show configuration and show database commands before enabling the broker configuration. Those commands will display the properties of your broker configuration and the databases involved in the configuration. You use them just to verify that everything is configured the way you want. To enable the broker configuration, you just run the command enable configuration. Once executed, your data guard configuration becomes managed by the broker. And that's it. The procedure is actually straightforward. And I don't see any reason for not enabling the broker in any data guard configuration. By completing this lecture, you should have learned how to do the following. Understand the broker capabilities, benefits and limitations. Describe the data guard broker components. Understand the data guard broker configuration files. Use the dgmgrl command line interface. Understand the broker properties. And finally, we learned about the hands-on procedure that you need to follow to enable the broker in your data guard configuration. And we concluded that in any data guard configuration you set up, 
it is recommended to enable the broker and use it for managing the data guard configuration. In the next practice lecture, we will implement the procedure of enabling the data guard broker in our data guard configuration. As always, thanks for listening and see you in the next lecture.